Hello, my name is Emma, also known as Made in the Moment, and my bag that is made out of t-shirt yarn, which is what this tutorial is for. So today I'm going to show you how to make this little bag. The one I made in the tutorial is slightly bigger, but this is the one that I first designed. If you make this pattern, then tag me because I want to see what you've made. And that's all I have, so let's, let's do it. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this little purse out of t-shirt yarn. I love this because it's so nice and sturdy. Like it's really secure, it's not going to stretch out. And it's a great way to get some use out of old textiles that like you wouldn't use otherwise. It's up to you where you source these t-shirts. I feel like a lot of people just have things lying around, so that's definitely a great place to start. And if not, then you can thrift stuff. I would say try and thrift things that you think maybe wouldn't have any other life to them. I'll show you how to make one that is the same dimensions as mine, but it is a bag, so you can obviously make it as big or as small as you want and is like useful to you. So my bag is about eight inches across by about five inches, a little bit less. It's kind of hard to show, but the strap like unstretched is about 25 inches. But again, this is completely up to your own discretion. What you're gonna need for this is obviously some t-shirts or old fabric. You can really use anything. I have the bottom hem of this t-shirt that my roommate cropped and then this dress that my roommate and I found in a bag of clothes on the side of the street. Then you're also going to need some crochet hooks. So you're gonna need one big one and one small one. The big one is for crocheting with and the small one is for like kind of weaving the ends and sewing it together and stuff like that. For the previous one I showed you, I used, I think the 10 millimeter hook, but I can only find my eight for some reason now. But for this one, I might try the 15. You just need something that's like big enough for your yarn. So if you have a smaller hook, you're gonna cut the strips thinner. And if you have a bigger hook, you can cut them bigger to be chunkier. Again, up to you. I would like test out a couple strands before you really get into it. And then for my smaller hook, I'm using a 4.5, but you can really use whatever you have on hand. You could even try and use a yarn needle. Depends how, again, how thick you cut the strips. And then of course you're going to need scissors and a tape measure, which is optional, but recommended. For this, I used 190 grams of this t-shirt yarn. So it's, again, it's sort of hard to estimate, but what I would say is have a couple options on hand so that you can switch up the colors if you need to, if you run out or anything. I thought that what I had for this white would be plenty to make a whole bag and it literally only made this much. So it's not going to go as far as you think it's going to, but yeah, it's a fun project. Play around with and let's get into it. So I'm gonna start with this piece because this is from the bottom of a t-shirt. This is like most likely what you'll be working with. So the first thing you're gonna do is turn it inside out and cut out any tags that there are. So the first thing you wanna do is if you have a t-shirt that is connected to like the rest of the shirt, you're gonna to wanna to cut the bottom off like underneath the armpits so that it is just a nice tube like this. And then I'm going to cut the hem at the bottom off. This one has an interesting split hem and I'm gonna try actually to just cut the hem part off, but we'll see, I may have to end up cutting more off later on. But just to start with, I'm gonna cut right here and just cut right along this hem here. And then I'm gonna fold this over in half, but not all the way to the top edge. So I'm gonna leave like about an inch there at the top. And now I'm gonna cut in strips. So I'm gonna go from here all the way to here, but not cut in this layer. So I'll show you what that looks like. And you can measure this if you want to. If you know anything about me, you know that I am not a big measurer, so I will not be doing that. But if you are, I would recommend doing like about one inch all the way down on this side, and then one inch on this side. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. And the nice thing is your edges don't have to be super straight because once you stretch it out a little bit to use for the yarn and like once it's crocheted up, you won't be able to tell. Obviously you don't want it to be like a super, super skinny section and then the super, super thick section. But I think if you eyeball it and you have some good scissors, then it's gonna be pretty easy. So I'm gonna start here uh, about this width. 
and just kind of carefully cut through all these layers here until I get to this edge that's folded over and cut through that, oops, but not all the way to the edge. So you want to make sure, here's what this looks like now, that this part is still intact. And we'll come back to that in a second. So I'm just going to do that all the way down. Okay, so I've cut up all my strips and then I have this section that's intact. So in this connected part, I'm just going to cut diagonally from here to here, just like this. So now we have the, the start of the yarn and then you're going to basically just keep going, connecting this upper corner to this lower corner here to make the nice continuous strand of yarn, of t-shirt yarn that is. So you can see Here's the end, and it goes and goes and goes and gets to here, and then we're going to cut along here as well, and then repeat that all the way down. As you can see, my cuts were like pretty uneven, but like I said, it shouldn't really matter as long as you don't let anything get too, too thin. Like that's a little bit thin for my liking, but it is what it is, should be fine. And then I'm gonna take my end and just wind this up into a nice ball. So that whole big chunk of fabric didn't even make that much yarn. This is about 70 grams, so I'm going to want to do uh, about 120 more. I'll probably do closer to 150 just to make sure I have enough. I'm going to use this part as the bottom of the bag and then my other fabric as this part because I have much more of it. But you can really do whatever design you want. So t-shirts are great, but this dress actually has like a ton more fabric that will be continuous. And I'll show you what it looks like to cut from the armpits too. So if you have a piece of fabric that is connected to like a shirt part with arms and stuff, I'm gonna show you how to do the whole body of the dress first. So basically you're gonna go to the armpits and just cut straight across here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Well, my setup is really exposed right now, but you can see what I'm doing here a little bit better. So armpits, just putting the sleeves out of the way. I'll probably use the sleeves too if I need more yarn. And I'm gonna lay this as flat as I can. As you already saw, I'm not like the best at cutting and this really doesn't need that much precision, but I'm gonna cut across from here all the way to the armpit over here. Okay, actually not that bad, kind of straight. And this little thing might actually be cute. I might see if my roommate wants it and I won't cut it up. So it'll be like a little sleeve shrug thing. So by now you've probably guessed that we're gonna do the same thing with this skirt. The nice and bad thing is that this is like very long. So I'm gonna try a little bit better. So basically I'm just gonna fold it in half, get it nice and flat, and then just like judge this down a little. Got a pretty good thing going here. Just gonna try and be a little bit more careful on this one than I was last time, but no promises. And this fabric is quite a bit thinner than the other one. Like I have no idea if there's a way to tell on camera, but this is not like normal t-shirt fabric. It's a little bit more textured. It's kind of like, almost like a sports jersey. 
So I wasn't as worried about this being a little bit thin, but for this, if it is too thin, it will like break while I'm crocheting. So I'm gonna go for slightly thicker pieces. Okay, that was pretty good. I'm gonna go and do the rest of it. And then I actually forgot to cut the hem off at the beginning, but it's kind of good because I ended up with a little bit of unevenness at the end. So I'm just gonna cut this whole chunk off. So this is the hem. You can see how unevenly I cut. Again, doesn't really matter. And if I need to, I'll use this yarn. So I'm gonna hold on to it for now. And this is gonna be the same thing where it's diagonally between here and here. And since this one's so long, I'm actually gonna wind it as I go. So same thing here. Look at all the fuzz on my <laughs> table. Uh, I'm gonna have to vacuum all of this up. And I have this next ball finished. Let's see how much this weighs. Right at 140, which should be perfect with this. So yeah, we definitely have enough for that bag. And I'll maybe even make it a slightly bigger. So I am going to use this 15 millimeter hook. You can use whatever hook you want, but I'm gonna start with a slip knot and then chain until I get to around eight inches. I might do a little bit more for this one, but eight inches is the size of my original one. So this is about eight inches. With my 15 millimeter hook, I chained 11, and I'm just gonna chain two more just for fun, so it's a little bit bigger. And then going into the second chain from the hook, I'm going to single crochet. And then single crochet all the way to the end of the row. And then I'm going to put three single crochets into that last stitch. And then go back down this way with single crochets and I'm going to crochet over this tail. And back at the beginning of the row, I'm going to make two more single crochets into this stitch right here for a total of three again at the end. And then I'm going to slip stitch into that top of that first single crochet. And chain one. And if you would like to, this is a good place to put a stitch marker as like the beginning of the row stitch marker. And then I'm just going to single crochet all the way around again. So I've chained one and then I'm going to single crochet into this stitch here. 
And my philosophy with this is I'm just going to use up all of this yarn I have left and then I'll switch to the new color. So I am out of my first color and I'm going to join my second color. You can make a magic knot if you want, but I'm going to do just like a color change join. So I'm going to start this single crochet and then instead of finishing it by yarning over with this yarn, I'm going to yarn over with this yarn and pull through. And then just to be extra secure, I'm going to knot these ends. And then I will actually crochet over them. So single crochet with those two tails inside. So I have made it the height that I want it to be. Ideally, I would probably do one more row, but I'm running pretty low on yarn, so I'm just gonna go from here. And I'm going to switch to my 10 millimeter hook now. This is optional, but if you want to size down your hook for the strap, that will make it just a little bit sturdier. And you have two options now, so you can either chain as long as you want the strap to go, slip stitch onto this side, and then single crochet back the other way. Or you can do what I'm about to do, which is a foundation single crochet, we are basically doing the chain row and the single crochet row at the same time. So I have chained one over here. I'm gonna insert back into this stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through one, that's the chain, and then yarn over, pull through two, that's the single crochet. So pretty soon you'll see that we are chaining and then single crocheting at the same time. So I'm gonna go into that chain stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through one, chain, yarn over, pull through two. So you can see that is two chains and two single crochets. So I'm just gonna keep going, doing foundation single crochets until the strap is the length that I want it to be, and then I'll show you how to attach it to the other side. So I finished the length of my strap. This, I basically just went until I was almost out of yarn. I'm gonna do probably two more stitches. Actually, let's just do one so that there's a little tail. Then I'm gonna go into that stitch on the other side that is like that second of the three single crochets. It's basically just whichever one is at the top and I am going to go through both loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. So that's a slip stitch. And then I'm going to take my smaller hook. I'm gonna use my 4.5, but you can use literally whatever size, and just weave in that end I'm gonna cut this little seam off so that it's easier to weave the ends in. So I'm gonna go through this direction and literally just, I'm just pulling it through just like that. I'm gonna pull it back in the row below the other way And I'm just gonna trim the end here. 
and that's it. Uh, my t-shirt yarn has been shedding all over the place, so I have to go vacuum. I would recommend blocking your piece. So this is the size that this one ended up compared to my original one. I was like very loosely trying to make it a similar shape, but I like how they look pretty different just because of the thickness of the yarn, the size of the hook and everything else. Uh, I would recommend blocking this. If you can wet block, it will look the best. This one looks nice and flat and worn in and almost like felted together because I've used it so much. So I think this one will sort of start to settle in and the bag will kind of relax into its shape as well the more you use it and like the heavier things you put in it the more that it will stretch just a little bit but that is the tutorial i hope you enjoyed this please let me know if you try this tag me i would love to see i think this is a really fun way to upcycle some old shirts you can really get creative with like the patterns that you use and the contrast and obviously you can do it all in one color or stripes or some other combination of things i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you liked it like the video subscribe I make lots of tutorials. Let me know what kind of tutorial you want to see next and have a great rest of your day.